It's been a couple of months now. I've been off cigarettes. Switched to the Jewel. And uh, it's going well. I went from the five milligram um, inserts to the three milligram inserts, which are these right now. And uh, from these, I'll be going to the zero nicotine uh, inserts. And then hopefully from those to nothing. But it is working. This is the only thing that has ever helped me uh, actually quit cigarettes um, permanently. And obviously it's never permanently. I always could go back to cigarettes. I don't plan to. Um, but I've tried patches, I've tried the gum, I've tried cold turkey, and this is the only thing that's worked. So, uh, if you're a, a cigarette smoker and you feel like you want to quit, I highly recommend the Jewel. Anyways, just want to do an update on, um, a couple things. The Sebenza, which I have been carrying a lot since I got it. Just kind of want to give you my thoughts on it, um, now that it's got some, uh, serious pocket time. Also want to show you this um, traditional slip joint that I got uh, recently from Rosecraft Blades. Let's look at this Benza first. Here she is. This is the large Chris Reeves Sebenza with the micarta inlay. Attached a lanyard, a leather lanyard there. And um, this was my first time ever even handling a Chris Reeve knife, let alone owning one. Um, so I really had no idea what to expect when I bought this. I knew, obviously, it's a legendary knife. People love it. Um, and so far, I really, really like it. Um, it's a very heavy-duty work knife, but it is also slicey enough um, that it makes me happy. You know, I like carrying heavy-duty knives, and I do a lot of time, a lot of the time, uh, but my only issue with a lot of them are they just don't slice like I wish they did. Um, because a lot of them have just real thick blade stock. Um, the Sebenza here has relatively thick blade stock, but, um, if you, uh, watch my videos on, uh, my heavy duty beefy folders, this is the thinnest blade stock of all of them. I had the Cold Steel 8015, XM18, uh, Hinderer XM18, um, the uh, Chavez Scapegoat and the Spiderco Shaman. This has a uh, thinner blade stock than all of those. Um, also adding to the slicey factor is this hollow grind, which is a deep hollow grind. And um, those two elements combined make this um, actually pretty slicey for how heavy duty it is. Um, so that's kind of the main thing that I was really happy about. Um, it's just extremely solid feeling. Um, it has uh, loosened up a bit. It has broken in quite a bit. I can, well, I can, I can thumb flick it now. I wasn't able to do that when I first bought the knife, or when I first arrived. Um, but I really don't open it that way, hardly ever. I prefer to roll it out. It feels better. Um, you know, the, the, the click that you hear as the lock bar slams over is very satisfying. It's such a solid feeling uh, click that you hear. And uh, it just feels good, man. You know, the uh, the hydraulic action really is hydraulic, you know. Um, it's just so smooth. Um, I, I did take it apart and uh, I polished my washers on a strop and I added some grease. Uh, it comes with grease in it, but um, not a whole lot, so I added some more. Just the fluorinated grease that it comes with, and um, just basically used it a lot for a couple weeks, and um, it has gotten a lot smoother, and I know that it will continue to get smoother. The lockup is just unbelievably solid. Um, so solid. Uh, the sharpening choil is uh, done very well. A lot of life in the blade, a lot of... Um, material that you can sharpen away over time. Um, now, the the uh, this blasted finish, I'm not a massive fan of. I almost wish this was like a plain stonewash tie. Um, you can see on the clip there, it does scratch pretty easily and noticeably. Um, and I don't think I've gotten any scratches anywhere other than the clip. 
and it really doesn't bother me this is a user in fact i think um the scratches kind of add to the character of the knife um, but it's something to note that uh, this finish does seem to make the scratches very visible um, because it kind of darkens the the tint and then when you scratch uh, it, it just uh, it, it makes it really obvious so um, if that's something that you care about or really bothers you um, they also do they just started doing a glass blasted as well which is more of like a, a lighter almost stone washy looking finish so that might be something you would look want to look for if this is something that, that bothers you um ergonomically it's really good um you know the blade shape is really versatile um it's a drop point with a low enough tip where i can get to utility cuts uh, without too much difficulty um i really have no complaints man um you know the magna cut seems to be done well um haven't sharpened it yet obviously just dropped it seems to be holding a bitey edge really nicely um yeah really uh really liking it so far do i think 600 bucks for this is a, is a little much yes i do i think that's a little much um it's a very very high quality knife but i know that you are to some degree paying up for the chris reeve brand for the chris reeve name and that's just a an indisputable factor you're you're paying up for for the name and I was fine to do that. I think I would feel differently if this, uh, if I had paid for this with just cash right out of my pocket. But the way I paid for this was selling other knives that I owned. So it didn't, it didn't feel quite like six hundred bucks coming right out of my bank account, if that makes sense. But still, man, it's a lot. It's really a lot. Um, but I'm really happy with it. So whatever. Uh, next, let's look at this baby. Uh, also, I have been making slips. I've gotten better at it. This is kind of the, the pattern that I've settled on uh, that I like best. It's a one-piece construction that just, uh, it's, it's folded over, so there's only seams on the sides. The bottom is just a fold. And I've rounded the, uh, the top, and then I've only stitched it to about right here. That way you can fold this down and um, easily pull your knife out. So I've made these for a few people now. Um, obviously, I'm not a professional. Um, a lot of these guys are way better at it than I am, but, uh, if your favorite leather maker, uh, leather worker is all booked up, his books are full and you really just want to slip, um, hit me up. I'll make you one. I have this camo stuff right now. Um, I like it, man. It's really fresh leather. If that makes sense. You can hear it kind of, you know, creaking and cracking. It's good stuff. Um. Good thickness for for uh, slips, I think. So, anyways, this is the Rosecraft uh, Beaver Creek Barlow. This is my second Rosecraft blades knife. The first one I had, or uh, and still have, is the uh, Lusahatchee Jack. So this is their Barlow pattern. Um, Barlows typically have like this larger bolster up here with the inlay or covers down here. And they usually have this kind of um, initial lettering on them. Um, let's look at the blade. Real nice Warncliffe, uh, sheep's footy Warncliffe blade. Um, I guess Barlow blade, really. Um, I like this pattern a lot. I think I actually like it better than the Lisa Hatchie Jack pattern. Um, this is just more my jam. Now, uh, this is a factory second from... Um, traditionalpocketknives.com um, and actually my other one too is also a factory second um, he puts these up on his website uh, once in a while if he sees a, a little defect he'll uh, sell these at a discounted rate and um, I found the flaw it's right there you can see the cover material as cracked around that pin yeah, you can see it right there really shouldn't be uh, an issue it's not it's not like it's gonna break or anything uh, it's just a cosmetic thing um, so this was, uh, I think, f a little under 40 bucks, and they're usually a little over 50. So he discounts them um, when he finds a flaw. D2 blade steel. The, uh, the walk and talk is pretty good. It's not quite as strong a pull as the jack, um, but still quite good. Yeah. 
Um, they're just, I mean, the, the fit and finish is miles and miles better than Case. It, it kind of is disappointing and almost embarrassing for for Case being a U.S. manufacturer. Like, you, you want them to be better, you want them to be good, but they're just not, man. They're just not, you know, you, I, I had to come to terms with that. Um, the fit and finish here is just so much better. Look how smooth and nice and flush that back spacer or the uh, the back spring is with the covers and the liners it's just really look at the finish on this i believe it's some kind of wood i think it's some kind of wood maybe it could be bone i don't know but look at the polish on that cover look at the shine on the on the uh, stainless steel bolsters and everything the fit and finish is just really good I mean, you run your finger along here, you don't feel any seams whatsoever. It's just done really, really well. Really well. I love this swedge up here. It's one of my favorite uh, things about this knife. Um, see that nice fat swedge? And look how it thins out the tip. That's going to enable you uh, to... You know, do utility cuts through quite thick of material, and um, it keeps that real nice and thin all the way at the tip. For when you're cutting through thicker material, it's just going to pass through a lot easier, having that nice swedge right there. So it just keeps the whole, I mean, from here forward, is just really nice and thin. So that's pretty sweet. I like that a lot. I think it looks good. It's also a functional swedge. So... I really like it, man. Um, I wish, I wish Case did this good a job because I would rather buy American, you know? It feels better buying something from your country, whatever that country is. For me, it's America. Um, but I can't deny that this is just so much better than a Case um, in every single way. And, um, that's why I'm going to keep buying them. And I'm not going to buy any more case knives. So I'm tired of spending, um, you know, whatever, 50, 60, 70, 80 bucks on a knife. And it comes way off centered um, with the back spring sitting, uh, sitting up above the, the liners. Uh, and it's just annoying, man. Both of my, both of my uh, Rosecraft blades knives are perfectly centered. Um, no blade play. They're just, they're so much better, man. <laughs> so much better. So I, I really recommend these, um, at least the two I've tried. I, I really like their Swayback as well, which I might try at some point. Um, look at that finish, man. You can see my rear view mirror reflected in that. That's crazy. So that's about it. Everything else I'm carrying is just uh, my normal stuff. My, uh, well, I'll show you real quick in case you're new. Got uh, my titanium key bar, my truck key, and my little O light. And I use these, uh, whoopsie. I use these night eyes, um, like little number six shaped clips. Um, so I keep my truck keys, my house key, everything on here, and then my truck keys separate. And then they just snap onto my brass clip. So. When I want to start my truck, I clip it off. This stays on my jeans. Clip that off, use it. When I get out of my truck, clip that back on there. So that's why I don't, why I don't lose anything. I've lost keys before, it really sucks. And my flashlight I carry every single day. My Streamlight Wedge. I just like this thing, man. The charge lasts me like two, three weeks. Um, it carries really well. It just carries like a knife. I love how it carries um, But I am kind of considering possibly upgrading or at least trying something new I have no reason to upgrade this because it works perfectly good for me But I'm kind of just curious about you know what, what else is out there if you have any suggestions on a flashlight that carries like this like a knife deep carry I like that. It's thin and not round uh, Let me know in the comments also Weatherman Surge, which is seeing a lot of work. You can tell, I, I, I noticed this the other day. I don't know how that happened. 
this these scratches up here. I think I must have like dropped and scooted it face down on something. I don't know. Um, still working like a champ, man. I freaking love this thing. My only complaint is this is the second time my uh, my bit has fallen out and gotten lost. Uh, the first time it happened, I thought maybe I I, was, I misplaced it. Um, but it happened a second time, and I know for a fact I didn't have this tool out. So it is, in fact, falling out of here. You know, it's a, it's a replaceable bit. It's got a Phillips on one side, regular screwdriver on the other, and you can take it out and flip it around and, and put it back in here. It's weird because when it's in there and you're kind of like, you know, you're pulling on it, it seems like it's got good retention, but it's falling. It's, somehow it's falling out, and I have no idea how. Um, so I have to go buy yet another replacement. Um... They're not expensive, but it's just annoying. Um, I really got to look and find out why that's happening. If there's some way that I can tighten this little retainer clip, I don't know. But uh, that's annoying. Aside from that, I love this tool so much. I've gotten used to, you know, the increased weight, and um, it's just really nice. So that's it, guys. Hope you have a great Thursday. Uh, we got the live stream tonight duties live and um i will see you in there starting at six o'clock pacific love you guys i'll see you there adios